Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell Precision T3630 workstation memory upgrades and how to properly configure the system. For starters, the Dell Precision T3630 workstation takes Intel E2100 series CPUs or Intel Core i3, i5, or i7 series CPUs. There's one CPU socket and it is an 11, LGA 1151 socket. Um, as far as the RAM is concerned, it takes DDR4 memory, uh, there's four DIMM slots, and you can use two types of memory. ECC unbuffered, which is more of a server module, or you can use non-ECC unbuffered, which is more of a desktop module, and yes, both of them will fit and work. You cannot mix them together. You have to use one or the other. Um, as far as the, uh, the maxes, they're actually the exact same. For both of them, you can do uh, 128 gigabytes, uh, 432 gigs at uh, 2666 megahertz. Uh, and as far as actual the different speeds you can use, you can go to as low as uh, 2133, uh, 2400, or uh, 2666. So uh, let's go ahead and open it up. I'll show you a little bit more about the inside, how to properly configure the system, and um, all the good stuff in there. But before we do, uh, let me get my ESD gear on because you never want to shock the system. I will note if you're at home and you don't have ESD gear, don't worry. I would just recommend and not uh, opening, opening the system uh, on top of carpet and go uh, touch some copper or a piece of metal before you get inside just to help prevent uh, any ESD. So we'll be right back. All right, we are back with our ESD gear, so we're safe to open the machine. So first things first, you're going to notice there are two locks right here on the back. You want to flip them to unlock, so just pull them up. You, see, you hear that click, and now that they're unlocked, uh, you're just going to simply pull this lever right here, but I'm actually going to flip the machine to the side uh, before I do it so that you can see the inside, uh, but I just want to show you right here. You're going to pull this lever, and when you do, the top pops open right here. So uh, I'll show, that, show you that again on the side right now. Okay, so I switched the angle real quick to give you a better view of the side. Uh, so you're going to pull the lever as we discussed, and you'll see that, for lack of a better term, there's kind of hinges right here that it goes up and down. Uh, they're not real hinges, but uh, they'll just pop off, and you'll see that there's uh, these uh, tabs right here. So when you need to go uh, put it back, you need to line everything back up, but we'll show you that at the end. All right, uh, next thing is you're going to pull this cage up, and it goes straight like this. It doesn't go perfectly straight up, but it's kind of a curve on a hinge. So you're going to pull this all the way up so that now you have perfect access to get to uh, really anything you want if you were in here to uh, change out a video card or upgrade your CPU or upgrade your RAM, which is what we're here to do today. Uh, you really have access to everything right now. Um, so a couple things to note about the memory since that's what we are discussing today. Uh, you will see that there, as we discussed, there are four slots. Uh, the slots are color-coded. Um, white, black, white, black. That's to note that there are two channels, uh, two memory channels, I should say. And the start of each memory channel is the white slot. So if you were to load this machine with, say, just one module, you would actually use this white slot right here. And uh, Dell has also done, a, done us a service. And if you look in this section, it's hard to see on the screen. They're actually labeled. So uh, this first white one is DIM1. Uh, the second white one over here is DIM2. Uh, this black one over here is DIM3. Uh, and this black one right here is DIM4. So, if you're, you know, honestly, we recommend loading all four slots. But if you were loading two slots, you'd put them in the two white slots. If you were loading one, you'd put them in this first one, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and pull these out. We're actually upgrading. Uh, that we're taking out some 8 gigs right now, and we're putting in some 16 gigs for a local customer that stopped by. Um, so I'll show you how easy it is to pull the modules out and put them back in. Okay, so first things first, we have a little cable in the way. I'm just going to pull it to the side um, just to make sure that we don't run into any issues. Looks like it's going to keep fighting us, so I'm going to just make sure when I'm lifting the modules up, I don't accidentally snag it. So um, whenever I'm uh, pulling modules out, uh, personally, I like to put one hand over the top of it because sometimes they, when you click the tab, they'll go flying out and you don't want them to damage the board or another part in here and you don't want them to uh, damage the module itself. So I'm going to go ahead and lift it kind of like this. Normally I lift it straight up, but I'm trying to avoid the, uh, the cable there. All right. Okay, so just like that we can get the two modules removed. And we actually have some new Samsung modules back here that I'll pull out and show you guys. So 
So, uh, one of the things I do like to note uh, with any memory in general, um, you should always pay attention. There is uh, a notch or a key right here in the middle. Uh, this key is important for a number of reasons. One, it prevents users from putting in the wrong RAM. So if you were to, you know, grab some old DDR3 and put them in, thinking they'll work, um, it won't. They won't physically fit. If you were to grab some old DDR2, they won't physically fit. Um, it's just there to prevent users from errors uh, or creating uh, unnecessary errors. But it's also important because there's a notch on the DIMM slot itself. So you need to make sure that you line the module up properly. Uh, because if you put it in the wrong way, you could do one of two things. You could damage the DIMM slot, which would mean you might have to replace the motherboard, or you could damage the module itself. Neither are things you want to do because no one wants to spend money on stuff like that. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line this up. But before I do, I like to push all my tabs open. It just makes it a little bit easier when I'm in here uh, putting parts in. So we'll go ahead and uh, load it up. Uh, since I'm putting all four in, I'm actually going to start with the, uh, the black slot on the furthest inside just because it's kind of snug um, and I don't want to load uh, all the three on the outside and then get it myself in a position where it's really kind of tight. So, um, but again, if you were only putting two in, as we discussed, the two white slots. But I wanted to say that in advance so someone doesn't copy what I'm doing and think that that is the way to do it. So, all right, now that we have it lined up, you're just gonna slide it in. And one thing I always like to note, so like right now the module is it's seated, but it's not fully seated and it's not in, so you really need to push the module all the way. And you'll hear a click. You hear that click? This side didn't get the click. Yep, you hear the click. And that way you know that the module is fully seated. It happens quite often where uh, someone will be loading a module and they think uh, that there's an error with the DIM or the module itself is bad and um, really what, what's happening is the module isn't fully seated nine times out of ten so we always tell people just to triple check and make sure sometimes even just rotating them around uh, can help to make sure that you're not running into that issue so alright so just keep on plugging away and, and really you can see in a matter of I mean what a minute or two you can load up four modules with relative ease and you know you don't have to be a computer technician if you're just you know someone at home wanting to upgrade your PC um, it's it's really not hard to do um, anyone can do it you just need to follow the proper steps um, and you know really it's, it was just that easy to do so um, now that we're done I'm gonna go ahead and close it back up so you're gonna simply pull the cage down And you'll hear it click kind of back into place. And then we're going to put our top back on. I will note uh, with the top, as we discussed, you need to make sure you line the tabs up. Uh, but this can be a little tricky. Um, sometimes it takes doing it a few times to line everything up properly. Um, and when you do, you'll hear it click down. Nice little uh, pop right there. You know, it's fully in. And just like that, we're done. So uh, thank you guys for stopping by to learn a little bit more today. Uh, about the Dell Precision T3630. If you need any memory upgrades for yourself, please feel free to reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And thanks again for stopping by, and don't forget to smash that subscribe button.